Well, that was a bit of an introduction. I hope uh, at least the other two speakers tonight will live up to it. Uh, when asked how did Sculpture by the Sea began, in many ways it began with my childhood and my parents asking me or telling me, don't be afraid to be the black sheep. I really took these words as a, as a challenge, something that I needed to, to live up to. And there was an excitement about that, but there was also a huge sense of fear. You know, will I be able to do something of any importance with my life? So at the age of seven, I saw the rock musical Jesus Christ Superstar, and I was blown away. And I thought, I want to create something like I've just seen on stage. So I decided to do that, and I invited all my friends around, and we were going to put on Superstar. Only problem was, it was an all-boys school. No one wanted to be Jesus, and no one was certainly going to be Mary. Another key aspect in Sculpture by the Sea was I couldn't find the jobs that I wanted. I thought, you know, I could be a farmer, I could be a geologist, I could be a teacher. All of those things seemed fascinating, but only really as life experiences for a year or two, not as something that I would dedicate my life to. Many people expected that I was going to follow my father into law, and I actually did choose to do law, but I made a pact with myself that I'd quit after two years because I'd get a sense of, an or a bit of an understanding of the commercial world that would help me as I progressed trying to work out what I was going to do with my life. When I quit law, though, I didn't really quite realise how much I'd given up and how much it, it meant to my, my father in particular. And um, as, you know, shortly after I finished, my father gave me his silver, sterling silver collar studs that he'd worn every, worn every day as a barrister and said, you know, I always was going to give these to one of my sons who followed me to the bar. I certainly knew how to follow him to the bar, but a different type of bar. <laughs> and uh, he said, you're the closest I'm going to get, so you may as well have them. I had not lived on continental Europe, and I, I loved the idea of doing that. So I headed to Prague. Um, why Prague? I love Czech writers. I love the idea of the philosopher kings. Václav Havel, the president in 1989 or 90, you know, was a playwright. I thought, how fantastic is this place? In Prague, I happily um, developed some artist friends. And those friends one night took me to a, a sculpture park where, thir where sculptures were set amongst 13th century ruins. And it was an extraordinary ex experience to be amongst this, a very moody night. And one of the girls jumped up onto this wall, this ruin, and just stood there like that. And with the moon behind her, I didn't know if she was one of our group or if she was a sculpture. And I immediately, at that moment, got the drama and the theatricality, if not the human element, of sculpture. Fast forward a few years, I returned to Sydney and some friends had heard me talk about this sculpture project that I wanted to create. And they said, I think you should come and see the Bondi to Tamarama Coastal Walk. And I went down onto the walk and I could just see where the sculptures would be. And I like to joke that it's as if God and the Mayor of Waverley got together to create the most perfect sculpture park. Because we can drive sculptures, as you would know, right to the edge of a cliff overlooking Bondi and the Tasman Sea and the Pacific Ocean. This was a, a pretty important moment for me. I had, had been at really at a career crossroads and I'd press go. And in 10 weeks, the first show was on. Uh, it was up, on and down in one day, 64 sculptures. It's, everyone was a volunteer working out of my lounge room. And on a $400 marketing budget, 25,000 people turned up. The first seven years of Sculpture by the Sea were hell. Um, I started with $100 in the bank because I'd been thinking I had this major film job and that didn't come through. And I found myself in this tunnel where I literally didn't look up for seven years. And along the way, I realised I was riding the wave that I wanted to ride and had always wanted to ride, but it was much bigger than I'd expected. Part of the, the key difficulties for me as a journey was um, thinking that everyone was the same as me and I had to learn how to adapt to work with other staff, people who might have great ideas but express them differently to me, people who work at a different pace to me. And that was a real challenge for me. Um, literally only six or seven years ago, I started to learn that lesson. Um, and that's in keeping with one of the key things of being a producer, is to be brutally honest with yourself. Um, it's, if you're not, then you fail. 
after so many years of, of working on Sculpture by the Sea, believe it or not, this year is going to be the 18th. A lot of people say to me, why do I keep doing it? You know, you're not getting paid particularly much. It's, I, the answer is it's a hell of a thing to come up with an idea and to have so many artists and so many people respond to that. And that, that's special. But f the other thing for me is every year that first face of a child that I see, it's usually a child just beaming at the sculptures, is priceless. You know, and and that is, that's the sort of thing that really drives me from year to year. To wrap up, the guys here asked me what I would like to be, I suppose, known as or my legacy. And it's simply um, to be someone who comes up with ideas and who puts them into reality. So thank you for having me along tonight. Thank you.